knock. Hi. Welcome to Knock Knock Hi. We are the Glockenfleckens. I am Dr. Glockenflecken. I am Lady Glockenflecken. Also known as Will and Kristen Flannery. And uh, we're glad you're here. We have a very fun, exciting show for you. Today, uh, we have Dr. Rosemary Leslie. Uh, she is a family medicine doctor and also born and raised in Minnesota. And she recorded today with us. There's a snowstorm, like a full on giant. Yes, feet and feet of lizard, snow. Lizard, uh, just, yes. you know, things that happen in Minnesota. Uh, by the way, also has like a two and a half month old baby. At yes. Home. I don't know what she was doing talking with us, but we appreciate it <laughs> we because sure do. That's uh, a lot to deal with. she may have had other things that she could have been using that time for. So we appreciated her coming on. And uh, it got me thinking about our experience with snow mm. mm -hmm. <laughs> because the two of us, we grew up in Texas. I grew up in the Houston area. You're a city boy. I'm a city boy. Uh, and um, uh, Kristen grew up in central Texas. Yes. Very much not a city girl. Uh, well, city girl at heart, trapped in the country. Yeah. Dublin, Texas That's is the right. name of the place. That's right. Dr. Pepper. There was a Dr. Pepper factory there. You worked there, didn't you? No, no. My brother did. I didn't. Oh, you didn't? No. Okay. Did they Did they not uh, accept your application? Because well, I know you, I knew you tried. You know, I was I did what, not. What else are you going to do in <laughs> Dublin, Texas? Just doing other things. What lifeguard at the community pool? I was coaching gymnastics, if you must know, and also okay. working at my parents' dairy supply store. Well, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> but the point is, uh, we are we're very much not snow uh, adjacent. We did not experience a lot of snow. Mm -hmm. We didn't grow up with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I played like summer sports year round in the Houston area. Yeah. And so when we left Texas after we graduated college and went to Dartmouth for med school and grad school, yes, we were in for a surprise. Mm -hmm. I mean, not really surprise, but more uh, just a shock. Well, and we had to look up where Dartmouth was first of all like we knew it was yes. in the northeast it was up somewhere. there somewhere it's very far up there and and if you've never been to that area of a country a lot of snow new hampshire and needless to say um we and most most uh more particularly me um oh yeah i was not prepared in general you fare less well at you, things you were better you were better prepared but i uh the first the first big snowstorm we had which is like three feet um i walk out of the our front door of our apartment. I did say something to you on your way out. I let the record and show. And I probably said, I'm going to be fine. Yep. That's probably what I said. That's what you That's said. one I of said, my classic lines. I said, hey, are you going to wear those shoes today? <laughs> and so <laughs> the shoes I was wearing were like sneakers, like something uh -huh. you play basketball like, in. Like cloth. Yeah. And uh, I got, how far did I get? Oh, not even to the mailbox. Yeah, maybe I uh, will say like 15 feet. And then I, my feet were soaking wet and I turned around and I, told, I remember the, the sound too. It was Kristen. <laughs> I don't think I was crying. <laughs> maybe I was very upset. I was, I was, probably, you were going to be late to class because uh, now you yeah. had to deal with your shoes. Yeah. And so I it hate was being late to things. You do. So it was the, a note so, of desperation. And you gave me a ride. I did. Yeah. After we shoveled the car out and everything. Yeah. It took a while. <laughs> and despite living up there for five years, like we never, well, I did go skiing once. That's a story for another That's day. A, yes. But another. we, uh, we never really got used to the, the, it's the volume of snow. Mm. Like I can handle a little bit of snow, but it's just the, the sheer amount yeah, it just adds up that, yeah, that you experience up there. And so, um, uh, so we got the hell out of there as quickly as possible and moved, uh, as quickly as possible being five, five years. years. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, moved to, uh, the Midwest where and it's also, snowy. it's also snowy, very, very cold, but not quite as much snow in Iowa. So, uh, we fared it was, much better. It was there. more ice. That's true. In Iowa, which brought its own challenges. And why are we talking about? Oh, yeah. Uh, our guest is from uh, New, uh, of New Hampshire, is from Minnesota, <laughs> born and raised. And so we talked a little bit about snow and her experience and adventures living in a very snowy place. Uh, and so let's, um, I don't think I really introduced her very well. Let me introduce her again. Dr. Rosemarie Leslie, 
a family medicine physician uh, who provides primary care and pregnancy care in rural Minnesota. She's got a lot of really interesting things to say as well, just about um, uh, the state of pregnancy care and of pregnancy centers and in in rural areas of the country. And so, uh, you know, uh, listen for that. You know, and toward just the end of those the areas alone that she works in that lets you yeah. know, you know, family medicine, rural medicine, and pregnancy on top of that she has seen some stuff you know <laughs> that's right like, yeah. probably nothing can surprise her anymore so let's get to it all right here we go here is dr rose marie leslie all right we're here with dr leslie of uh, tiktok fame and uh, family medicine fame and uh fighting misinformation fame and uh it's so exciting to have you here thank you for being on Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. And this is an exciting time in your life, right? Yes, it is a very exciting time in my life. Tell us what happened. I had a baby about two and a half you months a ago. Baby. I had a baby. Yeah. Congratulations. So, That's great. Thank you. Everything's going well. Things are going great. I'm a new parent, you know. I can't awesome. believe we made you do this when you have like <laughs> a a less than three month old. And okay. so <laughs> grandma's next door watching him. So, oh, good. That's, you know, good. we got back up. <laughs> what kind of a baby did you get? Did you get one that sleeps and eats and all of that? Or did you get one that is allergic to all of those things like ours was? Good question. Um, we uh, have been very lucky. Last night was the first night that our baby slept through the night. It all night, two and a half months. Wow. That is amazing. Fantastic. That is I know. incredible. I know. I'm like running on eight hours of sleep right now. I can't believe it. Look at oh, that. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's like it's like he knew that you had something you yeah. needed to do today. That's, I, that's very that's thoughtful it. for your of your baby yeah. to accommodate us like this. He he. <laughs> yeah, he was thinking of you guys when he did that. I think. Yeah, he's already. So, so how long are you taking off from work? I am taking off uh, 12 weeks plus a week or two of extra PTO that I, well, time off, not paid, that yeah. I um, I was able to take off on top of uh, the, you know, standard 12 yeah. weeks that you get. So, yeah. Also unpaid, yeah, by uh, the way. Right. And, and tell me, so we know that you're in uh, Minnesota. Now, right. are you a, 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 a Minnesota lifer? Is this is this your home? Yeah, I don't hear the accent. So I, I hear a little bit. Do you? Oh, you oh there it. it is. I hear it. Yeah, we can do it. the whole thing at, like this if you guys want. I'll bring over some hot dish and some walleye. <laughs> oh, some hot yeah. dish. Yeah. We, remember so, hot dish. Oh, I remember. I mean, we, we've we <laughs> never, you know, lived in Minnesota, but, you know, we both lived in Iowa for uh, three years. So we, you know, it's close proximity, yeah. Midwest, yeah. you know. Yeah. I was just flying through Minneapolis, actually, and the, the person at the gate uh, said, big. About oh, yeah. about fifty times, and so it's very classic. Don't forget you know. your bag. No, <laughs> <laughs> love it. That's great. So you like are code switching between your Minnesota accent and can you can you bring it out? Like if you got like you know with uh with patients, do you do you, yes. do you really kind of play it up a little bit sometimes? You, and sometimes if somebody has a thick Minnesotan accent, I will just yeah. without trying. I, I'm like, oh, yeah, tell me yeah. about those kidney stones. <laughs> yeah, you know, I can't help it. It just comes out. There's nothing I can right. do to stop it. Um, yeah. You know, if I'm just talking normally, then oftentimes people will have to kind of, you know, listen a little bit to, to know that mm -hmm. I have a Minnesotan accent, but give me around somebody with a thick accent and I just... I just slide right All into right it. Back in. yep. I did the same thing. Like I grew up in Texas, and uh, and I can I can go back into it if I need to. But it's, well, you just uh, do an impression of your mother. That's all you got to do. Tr that's true. It got that that the southern drawl. It, it comes out, so I I get it. But I love that the Minnesota accent. I'm sure your patients appreciate it too. Oh yeah, they love it. How are the um uh so how are your your colleagues doing without you? Are they are they surviving? I. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yep. Doing okay. Yeah. A lot of How my... big is your, do you have a, do you have other partners or uh, are you in a, what kind of group are you in? Yeah. So, um, I work in a, a pretty big practice for working. I, I live in a more rural part of the state. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we actually have quite, quite a big clinic. It's actually bigger than the clinic that I worked at 
uh, when I was up in the cities doing my residency. And so it's really great because we'll have, you know, a cardiologist once a week that'll come and a nephrologist oh, that'll nice. come once a week. Um, and then, yeah, so we have a lot of support there, which is really great. So, yeah, I have a lot and of an, colleagues who are taking care of my patients right now. And an ophthalmologist that comes never, right? We, That's, uh, I can't we have imagine. optometrists <laughs> in the clinic and ophthalmology okay. nearby, but a little bit of a drive. But gotcha. mostly you just call them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where, where are they? What, what part of the state are you in? I'm in Southern, you, Min this Southern is... Minnesota. Southern Minnesota. Okay. Yep. All right. But still north enough that you're like having a giant blizzard right now, you told us yeah. earlier. Well, yeah. she is in Minnesota. Yeah, I That's guess, right. I guess Implied it's, it's this all, time of year, I think. It's all yeah. that part of yeah. the year. <laughs> and and so you also, um, you have a focus though, because I know in, in family medicine, uh, obviously it's all primary care, but but you focus on pregnancy care as well. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. So lots of, I mean, family medicine is great um, because we wear lots of hats. So I do mm -hmm. primary care from babies to adults. And then I also work in a practice at the hospital with a group of family docs and OBGYNs, and we all deliver babies. And so the family docs kind of take on some of the patients who have more lower risk pregnancies and then the OBGYNs will take on the patients who have the higher risk pregnancies and we all kind of work together to take care of all of the pregnant patients in the town. It sounds, so I grew up in a very rural area um, in central Texas. The whole town was like 3,200 people or something. Um, and so were all the other surrounding towns nearby, if not smaller. So you know, in an, in an environment like that, I remember that we all had to wear a lot of hats. Like at the school, I had like 60 people in my graduating class. And so we all had to play all the sports or there wasn't enough for a team on right. all of them. You know, like it was just expected <laughs> that everybody kind of does everything. It yep. sounds like it's kind of similar in medicine there of everybody kind of just chipping in and doing all the things, even though maybe you have like a main thing. Yes. Yeah. Do you have to do you have to moonlight as the pharmacist from time to time? Are, yeah. Or or are you, you know, you know <laughs> is it that you would you got you got to are you the do you, you have a, a Texaco? Yeah, mic? Texaco Mike. Are, are you, uh, you know, in a pinch? Can you be the surgeon? Is that is that how I wish it... I wish. Um, <laughs> luckily, we have a pharmacist that works at Good. the hospital, which we are very lucky to have because they Fantastic. save our booties constantly. Right. Oh, I'm with you there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Big love to pharmacists. Absolutely. Uh, and, <laughs> and, um, uh, and so you, so you went to residency, I guess, in the, the same vicinity close by, or were you at the university? I was at uh, the Minnesota? university of Minnesota. Okay. Correct. All right. And then the whole plan, the whole time your plan was to, to stay in a, a rural area. Um, how has, the your social media impact i i'm so impressed because i i love that you i like the videos you do like uh, especially on these like products and like whether or not they're useful and um, um i imagine that's really helpful in your line of work uh seeing so many different types of patients coming in for all these different problems i'm sure you get asked questions about all these things and so uh, do you draw on those experiences whenever you're deciding what kind of content to make yeah, I do. I I get asked a lot of questions um, in the clinic, just general health questions. And I think to myself, wow, that would be a good you know question to answer yeah. on a TikTok post. Um, sometimes it's people asking me questions in TikTok. Um, sometimes it's yeah. random things that I see, like uh, they just made some really hardcore peppermint tums and peppermint can make acid reflux worse. And so I'm like, why? Why do you have an acid reflux medicine that can make acid reflux worse because of the flavor? <laughs> Unclear. Right. So I get inspiration <laughs> from everywhere, you know, like I'll, 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 I'll kind of find it sometimes when just walking down the aisle at, at Target. So, um, do you, yeah. Do your patients recognize you? Because you live in a small town, like do they do they know do does anybody know you from your social media presence? Some people it could be do. the other way around. What they? What do you mean? I think if, when you live in a small town, everyone just knows everyone. Oh, they just, they just, they just they know you. They already probably true. knew That's her. True. Yeah. That's right. I mean, I because I've had people come in and be surprised that they all of a sudden they like see me as their eye doctor, and like, oh, I've seen your TikToks, but uh, yeah. So have your patients generally seen yours, or are they not? What do they paying think about attention it? To that? Some have. 
especially some of the younger ones, but I don't really bring it up in clinic at all. Um, just because I want to make sure I'm focusing on, on the patient and what they're there for. But every once in a while, I'll have somebody who says, I know you, I've seen you online before, you know? Um, and then we just kind (laughs) of laugh about it. (laughs) Yeah. You know, uh, uh, I, I get asked a lot, like, you know, are do patients like it? Like, are they, when that does come up, is it a positive experience? And, and because a lot of people are kind of concerned that they have, you know, that if they have this public social media presence as a physician, like it can get you into trouble. I've only had really positive interactions with people. And I don't know what you, what your, um, uh, experience is with that. I, I have never had somebody be upset about it. Um, typically yeah. if people bring it up, they are excited to talk about it or lots of times they'll give me like, oh, hey, you should make a post about this, you know, um, they'll oh, give yeah. me ideas and, and, you know, they'll, or they'll pull up and be like, oh, I showed my sister your one about X, Y, or Z, you know? So I think that, um, yeah, in general, I've had a really positive reaction and response to it. Well, I'm sure that you have probably, you know, working in the area of the country that you're in and, uh, and what you do, you probably have a lot of, of interesting stories for us. Did you, uh, uh, have, do you have anything to share with us? Yeah. Well, I have a pretty good kind of family medicine story. It's a very family medicine story. Um, but it was actually back, uh, when I was in residency. So I've been out in practice for one year. I ended my residency about a year and a half ago. And, uh, so my, my real, like, oh yeah, this is what family medicine is like. A story comes from then. Um, and so, uh, we so got to give you the setup. I went, I went to residency, um, and did my training at a hospital. It's a quite a large hospital. It's a level one trauma center, but we were the only residency program that was based out of that hospital. Um, and so we, wow. uh, there were a couple of ER residents that would come in. There were a couple of uh, surgery residents that came, but we were the only ones that had the bait. We were based there. And so we had a level one trauma center. Yes. Yeah. It was was quite unique. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Okay. Yeah. So we uh, were the only residents who staffed labor and delivery with the OBGYNs and the family docs and then, and the midwives and everything. And we were the only residents who uh, had, you know, an inpatient medicine team. Um, and so it was quite a unique setup. Uh, I feel like yeah. I learned a lot and that a lot of things that are very oh, useful man, to know. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 What a great experience. <laughs> like you could like really firsthand experience with every specialty there. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. Um, and so I, I, this is actually when I was an intern. So that's your first year for non-medical people, your first year of residency. You don't even get the title of resident yet. You're still an intern. And, um, I was working on the team, taking care of adults who were sick and admitted to the hospital. And I was passing through the atrium of our hospital, which is this big open space. There's like the gift shop, the coffee shop, multiple levels, kind of open to multiple levels where where there's like waiting rooms for certain clinics or people can wait while their family members are in surgery, that kind of thing. So it's kind of this big open area. Mm-hmm. and. I hear somebody call out for help and oh, someone no. kind of yell- yelling like, ah, you know, and I look over and there is a woman who is pregnant, who is sliding out of her wheelchair, um, oh, kind no. of being assisted onto the ground. And, uh, everyone's like, I think this lady is going to have a baby. So I, I run over, right. Uh, go help uh-huh. the person who's about to have a baby. And, um, this woman is, you know, her water's broken. She's about to have a baby. She's in leggings. Can't have a baby in leggings, you know? No, so, that won't work. Nope. So we just look at each other and she's like, get this, get it, you know? And I'm like, okay. And, you know, pull the leggings down and the, the baby yeah. comes out. And with quick births like that, as you know, right? Like they happen so fast and you don't really do much. She just literally catch the baby. Um, well, don't don't give me too much credit. Yeah, okay? he doesn't it's know. Just, yeah, <laughs> that's but that but I I do know that. But thank you for giving me that credit. Oh yeah, anyway, there you go. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> but it happened. It happened very quick, and and it wasn't mm. like we could get this person somewhere else. Like the, when the baby comes, if the baby comes, right? Yeah. And um, and I just was there, and and I was like, oh, okay, what well, were you I've doing done... at the time? 
I when you when you heard that I scream. was I was just kind of walking walking through the You're atrium okay. um and and I think I'd ordered a coffee or something right and I was like <laughs> on my way to go see patients and did you go back and get their coffee afterwards <laughs> no actually, I don't I don't even you, remember at that point you know, <laughs> it probably kind of takes right. yeah takes the precedence that's right um <laughs> the 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 funny I mean there there obviously this was like a you know oh my gosh right and yeah. It was a big deal. And there were all of these people who had rushed over to the balconies of the atrium that were looking down. And the next person to show up that was like a medical professional was the medical director of the hospital, who's an internal medicine doctor in his suit. And he stands about, oh man, you know, yards away. <laughs> yeah. They never take care of pregnant <laughs> patients, right? That's not their thing. From a, sa from a safe distance. Right. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, <laughs> okay, he's just had a baby. And I'm like, yup, yup. Um, luckily, there was a lovely uh, a nurse who w had worked in with newborns in the past who was waiting for a family member, came down and was like helping dry off the baby. I'm sitting here like, you know, helping massage this person's uterus to have to help it stop bleeding, right? And and he looks at me and she, he goes, well, is she breathing? And and this woman who has her eyes closed, it, she's very clearly breathing, right? She just had, she just had a baby. She's doing, <laughs> she, she just doesn't want to open her eyes and look at all the people, right? Um, yeah yeah that's awkward yeah and and it's a very so, public birth yeah, very public right? birth yeah. And, yeah yeah and so he he ends up um he, he says well, well you should check her heart and lungs and not typically something that i had <laughs> that i associate with like what i had trained to do during births right was not like right. immediately after the birth go check their heart and lungs but i'm sitting i'm an intern you know i'm like okay this is this is the medical director of the hospital. I'm going to do what he tells me to, you know? So yeah. I go, I do that. And, and then right <laughs> afterwards, and he's not getting close at all. He looks up to the group and he goes, ladies and gentlemen, family medicine is here. Everything is handled. And, and, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just this lowly intern. And he's proclaiming to the group of people. And finally the rapid response team shows up, which I had mm -hmm. tried to get an OB stat to get, you know, the OBGYN down or one of my faculty or whatever, but it ended up being fine. But it was just this very, um, oh my gosh. kind of, yeah. uh, funny moment with me and this medical director who, who he's like, I think everything's okay. Is everything okay? And, and I'm, I'm hoping that everything's fine. It seemed like it was. Um, but, uh, it was just one of those moments where you're like, yes, yeah. in family medicine there, it is chaotic. We wear I'm, many I'm hats. I'm glad you were there. And typically we can be helpful in most situations. <laughs> so, right. yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, they were internal medicine, but I was trying to think, okay, what would be a, a worse person? to to just show up and just stand there i well, mean you of course me i that's that's my first thought was like yeah. well i'm glad that it was a medical director and not a, like an ophthalmologist or like a, a dermatologist even a radiologist would have been suspect i think yeah um, you know but you know <laughs> yeah okay. family medicine it's a pretty good family one medicine's have, a good one that's yeah. that, that, looking that, over your accidental public that birth. person was very lucky to have you there right and i think that the the medical director was probably just trying to be helpful. Yeah, like that's all he could remember you know? to say <laughs> at that point. By the time you're, uh, you know, in a suit in, in the hospital. I mean, yeah. I can't imagine that you're um, uh, high on your priority list is like cardiopulmonary collapse <laughs> right. after a healthy birth. You know, he was going you to know? the the organs of the body that he knew, right? He was like, okay, yeah. right. I know lungs, I know heart, and that yep. is what right. we're going to make that's sure what is, you check. Is, is going well. Um, oh, trust me. I would have whipped out my uh, ophthalmoscope and been doing a dilated exam right uh, there. Yes. Be like, I, I'll we, help. <laughs> we will make sure that this woman's eyeballs Wrong kind are of okay, dilation. Right? Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Different kind of dilation. That's yeah. right. Um, oh, man. that's Well, that's a memorable way to start that is. your residency. Was that, that was at sure. the beginning of your intern year? It was right at the beginning. Yeah. Oh, I, man. I just, that's great. You know? It, it, you know, it's also a very out. good metaphor for um, parenthood that That's like right. these kids are just going to do what they're going to do. They're going to surprise you. Yeah. And yeah. probably <laughs> publicly humiliate you. So <laughs> welcome to parenthood. Have you ever had any other uh, um, like public, uh, you know, where you had to respond to an emergency in public? Has that ever happened to you? It's never actually never happened to me. I've never. Cross my fingers. Mm. I have yet to have a plane I ride. 
I just Where I hope like, that I don't. Is there a doctor on the plane? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I think you do an okay job. I think you do. Yeah. Thank you. I, one thing I was going to ask you, whenever you had your baby, did you, uh, what what were your thoughts about, about, you know, having that baby in a place where you knew a lot of people? Ooh. Or did you? Did you have it somewhere or else? Or did you, you have know, it somewhere else? So I had, I had my my baby about at a town like 20 minutes away we live out in the country so it's like 15 minutes to where i work and then 20 mm-hmm. minutes up to this other town and i know that in our smaller communities it's very common to have people know you know be um your you know your primary care provider your pregnancy care provider like anybody anybody mm-hmm. uh in that community will know you know their doctor typically um and i am from a big city and i just hadn't white been able to say i'm gonna have one of my close colleagues deliver my baby yeah you know what i mean i hadn't quite gotten there (laughs) right um not even though i know many people have done that and that's great i just hadn't quite gotten there so i did go to a town like just a little bit farther away um so i had a little bit i was a little bit removed i didn't want to feel like i was at work you know when i was trying to like relax it's just very that's a that'd be hard mix of That's a weird work-life balance. Yeah, for yeah. sure. We had our first baby. I had our first baby while he was still in medical school, and we were in a rural area. And so there was one hospital you go to, and it's a teaching hospital associated with his medical school. Mm. And so, you know, normally I liked to let the med students come in if I go to the doctor because I, you know, I was married to one and I understood the struggles of trying to learn. And not everyone likes to have a student come in, so I was always try to be very generous about that. But for that one, I was like, no. I draw the line here. I don't want any of your classmates <laughs> to be delivering this baby or anywhere near yeah. the delivery of this baby. So I totally get that. Yeah. And the second baby, uh, I w- we were in. I was in residency. At his residency hospital. So I so I told her, you know, you don't have to have the baby in the eye clinic. It's okay. We can yeah, go somewhere that's else. Right. To he have was that. very kind. To <laughs> that's important to say that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. As far as looking for a job after, because you got this unbelievable training, uh, did you think about doing a fellowship before you went out into the workforce? It's crossed my mind here and there. Yeah. Um, the thing about people who go into family medicine is a lot of times we like to do a lot of different stuff. And so right, I'm like, yeah. fellowship, it gets me, it narrows me in a lot. You know, I did a lot of work um, in addiction medicine when I was in my training. Um, there are fellowships for family docs who are going to be uh, doing pregnancy care and uh, doing deliveries. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, there's a lot of sports medicine, geriatrics. There's all sorts of different stuff that you can do fellowships in. And so I dabbled with the idea. I'm like, oh, addiction, you know, yeah. do I do more training and obstetrical work? Um, But uh, for now, no, I I, I thought I mean, about you could, it. And you know, then... Yeah, I mean, for, you know, you could have just been like me and be like, you know, I am just tired of training. I can't stomach a single second more. You know, I wanted to like get out there and start paying off my student loans. But uh, that you is know, definitely part of it. People that too. want to do fellowships, fine. But you know, yeah, I think it's nice to it's nice uh, to to just keep it broad. You know, I think it it keeps things interesting. I don't know about you. It does. But you know, yeah. you want to narrow narrow things in. Um, what, do you have anything else? What else, what else do you have any, uh, um, anything else in, uh, from your residency years? Because there's so many things that, that just come out of nowhere in residency that you, you never expected you'd be doing, uh, and, um, or that you never think that thought that you could do. And then you surprise yourself and you end up like, you know, um, just taking care of people and doing an incredible job. And so, do you have anything else from residency that jumps out at you that that uh, was an interesting experience? Yeah. Well, I one thing I, I was thinking about as we're in our it, it's literally four days of snow and and sleet and such. And I was yeah. thinking when when I was thinking about, you know, what stories, what stories do I tell tell you guys on the podcast? Yeah. Um, I just started thinking about all of the different creative ways I have seen people get to work uh, in Minnesota. <laughs> Um, in the medical <laughs> yes. field, right? So, like, yeah, you can't not come to work with snow. I mean, you got to try. You, I mean, if it's super unsafe, obviously you can't come. Yeah. But as you guys know, living in Iowa, um, there are patients that have to be seen by somebody. And mm-hmm. nurses need to go to work. Scrub techs need to go to work. Uh, pharmacists need to get there. Doctors need to get to, to the hospital. 
And in Minnesota, people think of very creative ways to do that. Um, and I was thinking, um, because uh, I was thinking about this because they had recently set up the snowmobile. Uh, they have these like snowmobile markers and lanes in town. Um, oh, really? So for people who like I, to direct traffic, yeah, like snowmobile traffic, correct. So people can ride their snowmobiles. <laughs> awesome. Literally, I had a coworker who rode her snowmobile to work one day because there was so much snow. And her car was in the shop and she was like, well, I got to get to work. You know, okay. <laughs> like, there you go. Yeah. Um, Probably safer that way, too. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We all be- think of it as your wintertime motorcycle. Yeah. And it's cool. All right. <laughs> yeah. I've seen an ATV. That's another one. Um, so ATVs, yeah. you got snowmobiles right. and occasionally cars. Uh, yes, occasionally with, cars. With, I imagine four wheel drive is probably very important mm-hmm. where you live. Yeah. Four wheel drive um, is a must. What else? A dog sled? I is that a thing? I haven't seen dog sled, <laughs> but I'm sure up in northern Minnesota that has happened. <laughs> um, is there a big is there a big uh, culture difference between southern Minnesota and northern Minnesota? Uh, northern Minnesota, there's just a lot more woods. And so the southern half yeah. of Minnesota tends to be more like a mix of woods and farmland. But northern Minnesota is where all the lakes are and, and the woods. And so it's much more, you know, um, just just woods Outdoorsy. and colds and yeah. outdoorsy it kind of messes you have with a... canada you know right yeah you can't really you know separate the two except you know except that there's a border there's that a border. separates the two <laughs> <laughs> except for that is there is there a snowmobile in your future you know we haven't what do we you haven't think? committed maybe i i yeah. could get a little sidecar for the baby that's right oh that's right i'm sure they have those <laughs> snowmobile yeah. sidecars right. yeah I feel like that would make like a good book, like the snowmobile. Doctor. We did not grow up in a very snowy place, so it's it's. In fact, we went we went out to the East Coast and to the uh, you know. Yeah, Dartmouth, we went from Texas to New, New Hampshire. Hampshire. That was we we tra- we climates. wanted to get away yeah. as quickly as possible because it was too much snow, and so I'm I'm glad we have people like you that are that's not right. afraid of it and right. know what kind of shoes to wear. That's right. <laughs> So that's yeah. that's important. Well, let's let's take a let's take a quick break, okay? And we're gonna come back and we're gonna play a little game with you, Perfect. Dr. Leslie. We'll be right back. A big thank you to all of our listeners. This is a new show. Spread the love. Share with everyone. Leave a rating and review. Tell us what you think. Be honest. We want to hear from you. Later today, we're going to share some of your favorite medical stories. Share yours. Knock knock high at human contentcom We also have a Patreon. Come hang out with other members of the Knock Knock High community. Hang out with us. Yep, we're over there. We're there. We're doing stuff. It's it's great. We love it over there. Uh, And uh, early episode access, bonus episodes, including a whole monthly show with Kristen and I, where I don't know who else it would be, but uh, uh, called the Monthly Eye Exam, uh, where we react to medical shows and movies and stuff. We have a new Monthly Eye Exam episode available now on patreon and this is you tell us what we want to watch what we're, what we're going to react to what we're going to yeah we want to hear from you guys yeah. of what you want to see us watch he's he's a, a doctor i'm not though i'm very squeamish so yeah, the, please the, be the, easy the, on the grosser me. the thing the better in my opinion and i'm sure Kristen would agree so check it out let's get back to dr rosemary leslie <laughs> All right, we are back with Dr. Leslie, and Doctor, we're going to play a little game here that um, I just came up with uh, this morning. <laughs> that, I love that, it. That we call, uh, it's going to be by the numbers. Okay. Family medicine by the numbers, okay? I'm just going to, I think it'd be helpful for people to who are listening who may not really have a great sense of what primary care, family medicine, what the extent to what you do uh, on a day-to-day basis. And so what I thought I'd do is, is I'm just going to, um, say a, a phrase and then your, your job is just to give me a number. Okay. 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 So I'm going to say something. You just, you just give me a number. Sounds All right. Good. It doesn't have to be totally accurate. Just whatever, as best as you can do. Okay? Ballpark, it. ballpark, ballpark here. All right. By the numbers. First one, number of patients you see per day. 18 to 20, like full day. All right. Number of hours you work per week in clinic. Um, how many she's hours? She's like, are, how many hours are in a week? How many hours are you, <laughs> are you at your job? 
I'm like physically there. So I work point point physically there. I work point eight. Um, Okay. And so, but what that ends up meaning is that on my short day, when my last Mm. patient is at 235, I'm still typically there from about 715 until 430. Um, Okay. And then if I have babies to round on in the hospital or a patient who's in labor, then tack an hour or two plus Uh, on to that. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then my next question, number of hours that you work at home. Do you ever have to bring your home, your work home with you? Yes. I'm trying to get out of that. Uh, of doing that, but I do have we to. We all try to not do that. Yeah. yeah, I would say that I probably chart week. chart at home five plus hours a week. Five hours a week, roughly. Okay. How many babies do you deliver per year? Well, this was just my first year of practice, uh, so I'd okay. say probably about forty. Nice. It's a lot of babies. This is a, that... So it's like, what, 10 years from now, all the babies will be delivered by you in the whole town. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how big your town is. I don't We're, know. It's like I don't know how rural it it's is. It's like 15,000. So it's, it's oh, a de- well, it's, 15, that's, 20. That's, that's a it's good a size. It's a decent okay. size. Yeah. It's a decent size. It'll take more than 10 you years probably, like, for you have to d- a deliver McDonald's. all the babies. We that's do. how I judge it. What kind of restaurants do you? Yeah. See, so that's a oh, very, that's a good is, size is town good, in the rural yeah. area if you have yeah. a McDonald's. Yeah. You got, yeah. that's a good size area. Um, you help, how big was your town growing up? It was like Dublin, 30, Texas? 32 or 30, 3,500 or something. 3,500. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's pretty small. All right. Um, number of children that you see in clinic in a week. I would say like, probably. Okay, we'll just do a percentage of, of your patient population that's kids. Probably a third to a half. Okay. And so the rest of them are adults, I assume. Yes. All right. Yep. Do you like that percentage? Do you like that breakdown? I do. I like seeing kids. Is that kids. ideal for you? Yeah. 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 It's good. It's good to see it. Kids, they're, they're funny and healthy and they I don't know. have, you know, they're, they're, uh, they probably make you work for it too sometimes. Yeah. And they're right? brutally honest. <laughs> yeah. That's what's funny about oh, it. Oh, yeah. That's a good thing about kids. Yeah. 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 They are brutally honest. Yeah. Number of times you consult cardiology in a month. Oh. Um, I would say three. Okay. Number of times the cardiologist has gotten mad at you for consulting them oh, per month. Yeah, that happens sometimes. <laughs> That happens over <laughs> we, You know, we have. We'll this... say over the last year, over a year, how many times, <laughs> how many, how many uh, contentious uh, uh, conversations have you had with cardiology? Maybe, maybe three. Let's say three. Okay. We have, we have a right. lovely um, cardiology nurse practitioner that works a lot at our clinic. Um, and uh-huh. so, you know, she's incredibly kind. I don't want to get you in trouble with the cardiologist. <laughs> Sometimes we have this but phone it, it service happens. and it they're happens. like, oh, you know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number of times you've said, I think we need to get you in to see your eye doctor over the last year. <laughs> oh, like daily. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Because I frequently say, we th- I think you need to follow up with your primary <laughs> care doctor about this. So we'll, we'll, we'll call it even. There. That's right. Usually it's my patients if they have diabetes and, they, and it says a big red yes. flag due for diabetic eye exam. And I'm like, excuse me, have you been in to see your ophthalmologist? Yes, so, yes. Yep. We do a lot of those. Is it easy to get in to see your local ophthalmologist? It's pretty easy. Are they, are they nice to you? They are, are they nice. nice to you? Yes. Okay, Yes. Good. Yeah. Good. I mean, it's, it's so many people. There's so many nice people in Minnesota. They really are. Yeah. It's, it's a great place. Yeah. Um, number of prior authorizations per week. Oh, so many. Um, that you are actively involved in. I would say that I actively am involved in maybe... 10 but there's a whole department at mm-hmm. our um at our clinic or the system that I work for who handle prior authorizations before they even get to me but then if they get to me it's usually takes me a good half hour plus yeah. to deal with each one of them yes yeah. yes same thing with our our clinic we have we have people that that's what they do and yep. isn't that depressing it is that's like that we have to have entire departments dedicated to just 
proving to insurance companies that we know what we're talking about. That's right. That's kind of that kind of sucks. All it right. does. So um, that's a, so number of hours you've spent listening to health insurance company on hold music over the last year. <laughs> I can't even count how many. It's <laughs> <laughs> truly a lot. Uh, yeah. It's on your Spotify playlist. It's always, probably, it's always, it's so, yeah, always there. Right. some sort of like the jazz fusion situation. But once you get to December, <laughs> it's always holiday music. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. It is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, which doesn't make it better. I don't know what they're thinking, if that's like lessening the blow of having to, <laughs> to be on hold, but it doesn't work. Well, and at, the, at that amount of time, it just becomes a unique form of torture. That's so right. they're probably doing it on purpose, hoping you'll just hang up. And it's give always up. the same, like five songs on repeat, which, yes, is a unique form of torture. That's, yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, number of times, this is your, you've, basically finished your first year out in practice, right? Right. So number of times um, over this past year that you had to excuse yourself from the exam room to look something up because you weren't sure what to do. Oh, you know what's, you know what I do often is I will check in the room with the patient. I'll say, you know what, let's look at these guidelines together. Um, So I do that a lot because because stepping out actually causes, it takes a lot of time to do that. And then you got to log in somewhere else and whatever. I have done it. And somebody might see you and be like, hey, 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 can I ask you a quick question? And patients actually like it. I think they like seeing you like, you know, do put the work in research right there in front of them. Honestly, because they they know that you're dedicated to finding the right answer. I think it's a good thing. With family medicine, we can't know everything, right? Like we 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 can't. There's too much to know. There's so much. But we are very good at knowing where to look for things. And so I typically am like, oh, yes, this topic, I've got this great flow sheet from the American Diabetes Association that I'm going to pull up right now. We're going to look at the med you need together. (laughs) Well, there you go. There you go. And you have the knowledge, the background knowledge to be able to say, oh, this is good information. This is garbage information. Yeah, that's right. Number of gifts you've received in the last year from patients. You know, I, I. Let's see. I've been out for two and a half months. I know a lot of people do gift around the holiday time, but I did have a couple of gifts before I went on leave from very kind patients who wanted to give me something. What's what's like a classic? Yeah. How many of them are food based? What's like a classic Minnesota gift? Bars. What's something that's very Midwestern that that you would receive? Bars. Like, um, like treats. Bars? Okay. You know, uh, dude, like, oh, oh, oh like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> like baked. Yeah, like baked goods. bars. I'm like, I don't want to describe <laughs> yeah. this, but you know, it's another minute. It's like right. hot dish, but yep. dessert. <laughs> toffee bars, marshmallow fluff bars, cashew bars, toffee bars. I mean, there's endless numbers of bars, but that's a big I didn't realize bars were such a big thing. Indeed. Okay. Are they good? They're probably pretty good. They're huh? delightful. They're just a different yeah. form of a cookie, yeah. you know, a square cookie. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Number of days in an average month that you have to skip lunch? Every day. I, l- but it's okay. Me, she's got the bars. Let me, let me, oh, that's right. let me go back. I eat lunch always, but I'm working during my lunch every day. Yes. Okay. So it's never like a, like a real lunch break where you get to turn your brain off. You're always doing something. Yeah. It's like maybe once eating. or twice a month. I am actually sitting, eating my meal without currently, without actively being working at the same time. Number of times per year that you think to yourself, man, I'm glad I'm not a general surgeon. I probably have that thought maybe, maybe once, once every week or two. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mine's, mine's like probably about that. Maybe even a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you on there. Okay. And last one, last one. Number of times in a year, in the last year that you have thought about quitting family medicine to pursue a career in ophthalmology. Never. Be honest. Never. <laughs> nope. Never? Not you know, once? Everyone has that <sighs> thing in medicine where they, that gives them the like, oh, that, that you, you know, we all get a little grossed out. heebie-jeebies. Yeah, by some things. And for some people, it's, um, you know, they have a harder time taking care of, whoa. And some people, you know, yeah. it's it's babies because they poo all over the place, right? But for me, eyeballs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it, huh? I can't yeah. do eyeballs. I can't do eyeballs. Okay. Well, I, can't. I think you ended up in the in a great place, <laughs> and and I'm sure your your patients need you, and and you have uh, eye doctors that are readily available for you. That's right. By phone. By phone. Nine to five. Yep. <laughs> 
<laughs> no yep. weekends or holidays. Yep. Nighttime, potentially, but probably not. All right. That was that was by the numbers. I think we learned a lot. I learned a yep. lot about family medicine from yeah. that. Yeah. That's great. Um, so before we go, before we wrap up, what are you uh what are you up to? What are you doing? Where can we find you? Do you have any parting words you'd like to share with us? Yeah. Uh you can find me if I'm Dr. Leslie on uh TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, but kind of dabbling a little bit in other things besides TikTok, um, though not great at them yet. Um and and I'm I'm just continuing continuing my work uh soon enough. Once the holidays are done, I'll be back to work. One thing I I wanted to give a shout out about and make I think medical professionals, but everybody aware of, is the closures of labor and delivery units in rural America is just a kind of astounding. And it's happening um about nine percent every decade to the point where there are people who have to drive two, three, four hours um, to have a baby. And so I think it's not something that wow. a lot of people are talking about, but it's something that seriously impacts uh, rural communities. And so I just, it's something that I have been kind of working more um, on and looking towards as somebody who does that um, kind of type of work. But yeah. uh, we, just something that I want people to be thinking about when they're thinking about, you know, what, what types of, um, you know, projects in medicine should I be looking at and, and where should we be putting our funding? Um, that's something Absolutely. that I want to put on people's radar. So. Why, why are they closing? Uh, is there a, like a, a couple of big reasons? It's finance. Yeah. Just financially. Not, not, not enough money. Yeah. Uh, it mm -hmm. is, is the main reason I think, because, you know, labor, labor and, uh, delivery units that don't care for tons and tons of tons of people don't make hospitals tons and tons of mo money, right? I see. And so gotcha. those um, units get closed. And then, you know, we have cities in North northern Minnesota where people drive two to three hours um, to have a baby. And that's so it's very dangerous. It increases risk of, you know, maternal and neonatal, uh, poor maternal and neonatal outcomes. Um, and so that's something that yeah. I think a lot of Public health departments have been looking at, but it's not one of the um, more kind of hot button issues uh, lately. Um, right. But it's but it's it's not great. <laughs> so I just wanted to yeah, bring that yeah. to people's yeah. attention and and so that people can think about it. And we and we don't need nine month pregnant people to be on a um, snowmobile for no, two no. and a half hours or to go somewhere. Skiing. Right. Okay. Don't, <laughs> no. Don't, don't, don't need, don't need that. that. That's wonderful. Thank you for bringing that yeah, up. Thanks. So, uh, you know, keeping working to keep rural hospitals, labor and delivery units in rural places open and yeah. working for those communities. So, thank you, uh, Dr. Leslie. It's been a pleasure talking thank with you. you. Um, yeah, we appreciate your time and good luck with the the baby. Thank you yes. so much. It's so exciting. Enjoy those little potato snuggles. Those are the best. Yeah. And the little arm rolls and leg yeah, rolls. I and know. It's, it's fantastic. And apparently enjoy your full nights of sleep. And I <laughs> sort right. of hate you, but that's like, okay. Is this a... <laughs> Maybe it was a one-off. I don't know. We'll see. I'm crossing my fingers for tonight that it goes... Kid number insane. two always well, comes along I and know. is like... Anything that went well with we'll kid see. number one, they just yeah. totally undo. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks Maybe again. Maybe stop while you're ahead. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Keep going if you want. All right. Well, thanks again, All Dr. Right. Leslie. Thank we'll see you. you next Take time. care. All right. We'll be, we'll be right back to read your medical stories. So stick around. All right. Let's take a look at some of our favorite medical stories that were sent in by you, the listeners. <laughs> We've got some. I'm already laughing. At, at one of these. So, all right. Uh, story number one comes from Cameron. I am not a med student, but I was hanging out with my buddies that are med students. And one of them was telling me a story where they had a patient with bubonic plague. Oh, my. Bubonic plague. Like from like the dark yeah. Middle Ages. Right. Bubonic it's still plague. around. Apparently, yeah, it's still around, I guess. Uh, I've never seen it in the eyeballs, but well, you know, that's not saying much. Anyway, apparently this this patient ate a traditional African dish prepared by her grandmother, and she literally caught Yersinia pestis, which is the bacteria that causes sure. bubonic plague. plague. Yes. Uh, she was okay after a course of antibiotics. That being said... I thought it was interesting and shows how far medicine has come that she <laughs> really? got the bubonic plague and recovered with zero 
issues. Yeah, just a good point. had to take a few pills for a few right? days and good to go. The thing that killed like half of right. Europe in like, you know, a thousand years ago, all of a sudden is yeah, not a big deal NBD. anymore. I'm sure it is a big deal. Uh, it's, I'm well, probably, yeah, if you don't have access to antibiotics and stuff. I'm probably, there was a, probably a big bad. public health like reaction too because of, uh, I don't know. You don't I, want I'm not, that floating around in the community. You, you don't, you don't want an epidemic of bubonic plague. Um, that's happened before, I believe, and uh, it didn't go, <laughs> didn't over go well. well. And he finishes up by saying, thanks for all you do as physicians. I'm going into genetic counseling. I'm currently a medical scribe. We got a Jonathan. Oh. Cameron is a Jonathan. I'm giving you a, a Jonathan head nod right now, Cameron. It was, it was silent, it. but it was. If you watch on YouTube, you, you'd see it. Uh, and so I have seen the stress that comes with health healthcare, and well, good luck to you, Cameron. Uh, and thank you for the story. All right, fan story number two comes from Ranga. Ranga, I'm sorry if I said that wrong. As an ortho bro in training, ortho bro, was, um, he was feeling a little bit unwell that day, but no such thing as a sick day in ortho. That's a whole nother issue. So scrubbed up in a space suit. They actually do wear those. So act, a literal space it, suit well, or just like the the hazmat. Yeah, because I think it's because they um they're sawing bones. Uh-huh. And like there's bone dust. Disgusting. And so in order to like not inhale the bone dust, uh-huh. they wear like <laughs> A big hood. Please, people, if you're listening and like, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just, a, this is just what I. So they're trying not to I inhale think. their patients. Correct. And so mm-hmm. they wear the hood and the, the suit. So it's all like airtight, I believe. Yeah. And there's like okay. a, there's like a fan inside there because it gets hot. Mm, and so sure. they have like air coming through it that, that keeps them comfortable. Do all they right. have to wear the helmet? Um, the like round spacesuit helmet? It's not round. I think it's more square-ish. Oh, Maybe well, like a cylinder. Cool. Kind of, there's a big shield. I don't know how they do what they do in a spacesuit, but I guess you can lift weights anywhere with anything, wearing anything. All right. So anyway, so scrubbed up. So Renga scrubbed up in a spacesuit. Not feeling well. For an arthroplasty, which is a uh, like a joint replacement, mm-hmm. and started feeling unwell, more unwell. Uh oh. But before he could describe, oh no, I am afraid time, I know where this is going. He hurled into a spacesuit. Oh, <laughs> the chunks then started oh. getting circulated by the fan. No. Oh no. <laughs> which, uh. which I then offered to clean up before being rapidly banished from the operating room by the lead nurse. I mean, can't blame her. <laughs> Those are the types Ooh. of stories we want to hear on Knock Knock High. So thank you for <laughs> that. So so bad. You never know what's going to happen when you walk into the hospital for a day of work, everybody. All right. Thank you to Cameron and Ringo. Can we just Ringo. get ortho some sick days? Yeah, that, that's, you know, that's probably a, a lesson learned um, yeah. is, uh, you know what? There there are sick days. I think legally you have to be able to have a sick day. I know it doesn't seem like it, you know, in in residency. But you guys... Don't. It's either you take the day off or you throw up in a spacesuit. You just make your choice, okay? What sounds more reasonable to you? Anyway, send us your uh. stories. We want to hear your stories. Send us at knockknockhi at human-content.com. Well, that was a fun episode. Yeah. I, I love Midwestern people. I know. They're, they're just they're, they're so, so nice. They're they're very nice. They're just down to earth. Very especially um, Minnesota. Like out of all of the Midwest, they're like the and and crown not only jewel. <laughs> not only mid a Midwestern guest, but um, uh, a family medicine doctor. Yes, and, family medicine and doctors, rural medicine at that. Rural medicine, family medicine, just brilliant. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. You have to know so many things and have such a wide skill set to do all that. I mean, I I just I compare it to myself. Oh, yeah. Like, no I like, 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 Dr. Leslie got to the end of med school and was like, oh, I want to do everything. All of it. Like, give me all of it. Yeah. And I got to the end of med school and I was like, nope. I want to do uh, two centimeters. Yeah, I just, I just get, the back of uh, the eye. All that other stuff uh, below the nasal bridge, ah, get rid of it. That's fine. Someone else can handle that. I took the easy way out. Yeah. Uh, and so. That was uh, really fun talking with her and hearing about family medicine and some of the interesting things she's been through. 
Uh, do you know a doctor who should come on the show? Let us know. Do you, do you have an idea for guests? We're always up for ideas. All right, so let us know. There's several ways you can reach us. You can email us, knockknockhi at human-content.com. Visit us on TikTok, YouTube, Twitter. Twitter, why did I say it like that? Twitter, Twitter, twi- Twitter. Twi- I pronounce the T's. They do that in retina. In the retina part of ophthalmology, they say uh-huh. retina instead of retina. Uh-huh. So, retina. retina. Yeah, pronounce All the T. All three syllables. So, Twitter. Uh, you can also uh, hang out with us in our human content podcast family on Instagram and TikTok at human content pods. Thank you to all the listeners for leaving wonderful feedback and awesome reviews. We really appreciate that. We're getting going with this podcast. Uh, if you subscribe and comment on your favorite podcasting app or on YouTube, we might give you a shout out. All right. Like right now, uh, Mr. Thomas on YouTube said, finally, a podcast to listen to. Mr. Thomas, what are you doing with your podcast? I think I, don't, I think that's the only thing you can do with a podcast. But I appreciate the, the sentiment nonetheless. Uh, YouTube. Hey, that was the first time you made me genuinely laugh. Oh, in look at that. I still got it, decade. everyone. <laughs> still got it. Okay. So, YouTube, you can find uh, our full video episodes every week on YouTube at D Glock and Flecken. Uh, we also have a Patreon, lots of cool perks, bonus episodes where we react to medical shows and movies, hang out with the Knock Knock High member community. We are there. We are active. That's we right. are interacting. Uh, you can also early ad free episode access, interactive Q&A live stream events, and a lot more coming. Patreon.com slash Glock and Flecken or go to our website, Glock and Flecken dot com. I realize I never uh, tell people how to spell Glock and Flecken. I just well, have to assume that they do like it. just like it sounds. It shouldn't be a problem. That's not helpful. All right. Speaking of perks, uh, some shout outs to our Patreon community. Shout out to all of the Jonathans. Patrick, you are one of them. The Jonathans is a, is a level of our Patreon. And um, and the, John- the Jonathan is obviously my loyal scribe and also perhaps the backbone of medicine. Maybe the, society. Maybe the most important... Uh, 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 it's a side. Yeah, let's not let's not sell ourselves short here. Jonathan, yeah, Jonathan really could probably do keeps, everything. Keeps the world turning, and so we appreciate our Jonathans. So thank you, Patrick. Thank you for listening. We're your hosts, Will and Kristen Flannery, also known as the Glockham Fleckens. Special thanks to our guest, Dr. Rose Marie Leslie. Our executive producers are Will Flannery, Kristen Flannery, Aaron Corney, Rob Goldman, and Shanti Brook. Our editor and engineer is Jason Portizo. Our music is by Omar Benzvi. To learn about our Knock Knock Highs, program disclaimer and ethics policy, submission verification and licensing terms, and HIPAA release terms, you can go to glockenflecken.com or reach out to us at knockknockhigh at human-content.com with any questions, concerns, or fun medical puns, jokes. Stories. I did all of that in one breath. I thought I I could do it, and I did it. Wow, you are full of hot air. (laughs) Knock Knock High is a human content production. Thanks for watching the episode. You can find more on that playlist over there. If you prefer to listen or you just had your eyes dilated, you can binge full episodes wherever you get your podcasts or join the party over on Patreon where you get early access episodes, hang out with us, get lots of exclusive bonus content. Hope you subscribe, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think.